With three games remaining, all 12 teams within 11 points. And in Chicago tonight, the stakes are simple. Aaron Wright has helped the Red Stars to the playoffs seven consecutive seasons, but lose tonight and risk elimination. While Paige Monahan and Louisville have flirted with the line for months, time running out for Big Perp to jump into playoff position. October beckons on CBS Sports. is proud to present the NWSL on CBS Sports. Tonight's match between the Chicago Red Stars and Racing Louisville is brought to you by CarMax. Welcome to Bridgeview on a gorgeous September evening with Leanne Sanderson, the England international, Mike Watts on hand. A look at the NWSL table. It's presented by CarMax. The top three can clinch this weekend. The bottom two can be eliminated. Racing win, they could be above the line, Chicago can get within two points of the line with a victory here tonight, potentially keep their season alive. Leanne, I turn to you. You think about this matchup over the course of this year, paired together in the Challenge Cup, second meeting of the regular season, fourth overall. Louisville's got all the points. Chicago's got none of the goals. No, and there's some teams have their bogey team, and I feel like <laughs> racing Louisville seems to have Chicago's mark on this one. You know, with three games to go, it's surprising that the Chicago Red Stars, you know, bottom of the table, 11 points between top and bottom. It's quite incredible that they could still make the playoffs, and that's why this league is so fantastic. If you look at this Chicago team, the boost they got last game against Angel City came off the bench, and they'll be available again tonight. So maybe they start better, but if they don't, they hang around. Yeah, definitely, and we spoke to Chris Petroselli about the impact. When you make substitutions as a coach, you hope they make an impact. And these two, definitely in the last game, came off the bench, scored a goal. But obviously, you want to get the game wrapped up before you have to start making substitutions that have that impact. But it's good to have, you know, Shannon Matthews and Ava Cook on the bench being able to come in and make those implications. Conversely, Nadia Nadim's going to go from the start again, and they need her to score some goals if racing's going to make the postseason. Yeah, definitely. We know Nadia Nadim. She's a top, top player. You know, two ACL consecutive injury. I've had the injury myself. It's a difficult one to come back from, but they need her to start scoring goals for them in this playoff run. So all eyes on Nadia and racing here tonight. Fans filing in. There's a renewed energy around this Chicago team. They hope they can ride it right to their eighth consecutive playoff appearance. Do they stay alive? Does racing jump the line? Ally presents the NWSL on CBS Sports.
It is the second game in Chicago in six days for two national team stars for racing Louisville. They traded kits this week at training. Savannah DeMello and Tembi Katlana are both available to go here tonight. Katlana all 180 minutes of the two South African losses to the United States. 3-0, 2-0. And Savannah DeMello coming off the World Cup with the U.S. Featured the final 25 minutes of the second game here in Chicago. DeMello starts. But notably, Katlana's on the bench. Yeah, and I think Carson Pickett being back down that left-hand side is going to be really key in feeding the ball to Nadia Nadim in those areas. So I'm happy that she's back. She's got a fantastic delivery. And for the Chicago Red Stars, you know, they have to win out during these games with regards to the three games to go, the bottom of the table. But I think Nagasato in that number 10 role, feeding Stevens and Penelope Hawking on the left-hand side are going to be key matchups within this game tonight. Red Stars unchanged from their last game. Louisville, three changes, including the return of Carson Pickett. First touch belongs to Chicago tonight. Do they extend their season? They've got elimination scenarios on the mind, but any positive result, they hang around into October. For Louisville, this is a side that, with a victory, could potentially be above the line at the end of the weekend. Ball knocked away by Nair. Notably, a loss for Chicago alone is not enough. There are five different scenarios in which they could be x nayed from the playoff field. When you were playing, were you looking at elimination or anything of that nature and all the different permutations, or you just worried about the game in front no, of you? No, because I always play for the best teams, right? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. But I think, you know, with regards to the Chicago Red Stars, we highlighted it before the game. They're in 12th, and they can still make the playoffs. There's 11 points between 1 and 12. It's kind of unheard of. This time last year, you know, Gotham were way out of it. Bottom of the league, they weren't ever going to make it. So it's definitely all to play for. But I think, ultimately, Chris Petrosetti made a really good point. He said, I'm not sure many people would want to play against the Chicago Red Stars right now. And I agree with him. As crazy as that sounds, they're bottom of the league. But once they get going, they're really good. They even concede a lot of goals or they end up winning games. There's no middle ground. And I think that's been one of their problems this year, that they concede a lot of goals because of the marking in the box. And it seems to be a problem. They seem to have rectified lately. But this one, you know, the fact that they're still in amongst it is quite remarkable. They're contemplative. Drives this toward the halfway line. Will drop away from Malay. Nadim providing pressure. Monahan joins. Tierna Davidson back into the national team this past week, along with Casey Kruger. Very good news for those two players in their pursuit of an Olympic berth. Nadim, the slide by Davidson, but the offside flag has gone up. Yeah, to follow up to your point, Mike, with Casey Kruger and Tiana Davidson being picked for the national team again would be a massive relief for them. Not getting picked for World Cup would have hurt the players a lot. Emotionally, you know, you're still continuing to play within the league, and they did a really good job. And I've been surprised that the Chicago Red Stars have leaked so many goals this year with regard to their back line, and you know, especially Alyssa Nair, fantastic goalkeepers, but at times it's not her fault why they conceded so many goals, but it's great to see them back on the national team. Driving in St. George, tight angle, St. George. That's denied by Pickett, leads to a Chicago corner. Yeah, good defending from Carson Pickett, but I think St. George has to do better here. It's a really good ball. I still think they should deal with that, but it's a fantastic, you know, it's a decent effort in here, but the extra touch, I think, lets her down in the end, St. George. Maybe she found herself in this position really on in the game, but these are the moments she wants as a centre forward. Nice deflection from Carson Pickett, but I think St. George has to put that in the back of the net. St. George unused in both games of the Olympic playoff against Jamaica over the Canadians did manage to advance and will be in Paris next summer. Bianchi. Away, Hawking. Hawks that into the stands. Yeah, not the greatest of balls into the box from Bianchi. A little bit under here, it falls to Penelope Hawking. Not the greatest of attempts on target. A good play so far. 
from the Chicago Red Stars, you know, and Louisville are coming at them as well. So it's a really good matchup. So I think in this game, both teams are in a really difficult spot. And obviously the Challenge Cup, Louisville were kind of spent by the time that game come around. Reaching the end line once more. Looks like Demianchuk says another corner. Looking for a better ball into the box from Bianchi in this scenario. Drives, Kruger bounces toward Lund. It's cleared away from the line. Nervy moment, hocking forward. Flicked outside, Yuki Nagasato. Bianchi delivers. This will skid away and get picked up by Kruger. Yeah, it was a better ball in from Bianchi to Casey Kruger. I can't quite believe that Louisville allowed her to be wide open in those areas. She tried to kind of guide it back on target. The Chicago Red Stars have definitely started this game on the front foot, and that's exactly what Chris Petroselli would be wanting from this game. Malazzo. Nagasato. Still beloved in Louisville, and how could you not love Yuki Nagasato, to be fair? He's with them as an expansion side return to Chicago. Out wide, serve toward Nadeem. Nadeem on a bike! Would you doubt it? Monahan slips it inside, pick it. Tried to dance through. Forget a goal, Nadia Nadim is trying to shock the world out here. It definitely was up, it was set up for her to be able to do that. It wasn't the quite the best execution in the end. Slipped outside by DeMello. Cross hangs up, chance to bring it down. Spinning Fisher with a deflection, goes over the bar. Good play from Fisher in this situation. You can see coming into this game, for Borges, and this is a fantastic go. I love it, the acrobats, I could never do that. I never scored an overhead <laughs> kick in my career. I love the fact it set up, was not a good execution in the end, but it was definitely on. I'd and be on the availability report for months trying that. <laughs> well, yeah, it's a difficult thing to execute. <laughs> but I can, definitely Nadia Nadim has that in her locker. They're gonna need her to score goals, for sure, now that she's back. Carson Pickett. Ball over from Erseg. And is the breakout on through St. George. Covered in front of Bianchi. Into the penalty area once more. Over the spot, nobody home. I absolutely love Carson Pickett's delivery. We saw when she came on against the Houston Dash. She was putting those balls into those areas, and I think that can be really key within this game. The delivery that she has is absolutely brilliant, and Nadia and the team's good in the air. So those types of moments, Monaghan potentially could get into those areas as well. But having a player that has a delivery like that in your team is a real key thing. Malay, now Davis. Pickett missed just over a month between the game against Angel City she started in the middle of August to her return against the Dash. Davidson. Sometimes at times they've been forced into making only Challenge Cup final. Holloway went off, the corny came into that game. I thought she did a really good job. I think she's quite unfortunate to not start this game tonight as well. So they've met to make decisions within game. Kim Bjorkegren that can maybe impact the game to a certain degree. But having to take off defenders in the Challenge Cup early on was a difficult thing. But McCorney did a really good job when she came into the game. He was effusive in his praise of McCorney and watched her in Denmark and thought in Champions League against Juventus 
really the only player on her squad that he felt was playing at that level was on the list ever since the opportunity finally came around. Yeah. It's funny how the shop window is always open when you're playing these games. And in this league, expansion is coming. We now have a coach out in uh, the Bay Area that they've selected. You have to think all eyes are on these games this weekend with an expansion draft coming around. Then there's everyone overseas. Hawking slips through. This should be familiar. St. George and line. And it overcooked the service, running out of real estate. Stevens, the target. Looked like the ball went out of bounds. Potentially could have been offside as well. It was a brilliant ball from Penelope Hawking. I think St. George should do better. You can see great execution, great way to pass. I think you just have to slow your momentum here, put your foot on top of the ball, and just find, you know, Stevens was in that area here. You can see, just play it now, or put your foot on top of it. So not the best delivery in the end, but a fantastic ball from Penelope Hawking. And to your point, in the end, was deemed offside. Kruger. Davis lines her up. Kruger trying to unmask the Louisville defense. Ball clipped in. Bianchi the target out to DeMello. 280 minutes this year against Louisville. Not a single goal for Chicago. Kruger drives, seeking Yugi Nagasato. Ball dropped out of the air by Ricaro. St. George. Malazzo, Nagasato. Ricaro. Yuki, that'll find Lund. That initially started from a fantastic tackle from Bianchi in those areas, and I think the Chicago Red Star, they've certainly, Chris Petra said he'll be delighted that they've started on the front foot. I think they're forcing Racing Louisville to keep quite a deep line, and I think they're pushing on. We've seen St. George get a lot of joy down the right-hand side, and the player I really enjoy watching is Penelope Hawking. I think when she was injured, in this season, I think they really missed her. We saw she came on, made an impact in her first game back a couple of months ago and scored. But I think she's really had a good season this year when she's been able to play as well. Shrug of the shoulders from Hawking. She heard me, I think. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think so. Davidson kept it away from Nadine. for racing Louisville. Wiggling free for space, pick it. Clips back, miss clearance. Monahan teeing up Fisher off the crossbar. Skies into the air. Nair's got it now. Fisher didn't even make the bench last game. But with Ari Borges unavailable due to a knee knock this week, wow. I like this. This is a good ball in from Nadia Nadim. Carson picks it, pick it, keeps it alive. And this is a brilliant strike from Fisher. Absolutely brilliant. You can see Alyssa Nair had no chance in that situation. And Fisher will be looking to make a real impact in this game. You know, Borges is out during this game. So the midfield rotation is there. Because Yamsha usually plays, obviously, that defensive area. But Fisher's going to have to play a little bit more advanced. That was a fantastic strike. Tim Bjorkergren really high on Kayla Fisher, second round pick. One of my favorite quotes I've ever received from a coach, Lori Walker Hawk, who's her coach at Ohio State, said she has spaghetti arms. You just don't know which way she's going. Ball flicked outside by Nagasato, that's too far. Now for Chicago, a win or a draw, and they won't be eliminated into the second weekend of October, the penultimate week at the earliest. Second year as the head coach, and this is what's in mind. They've made the playoffs seven years running. Injuries and Mal Pugh's absence have certainly decimated the Red Stars. A loss in Orlando, L.A., win in some capacity. Their season is effectively over. 
anything else. You start getting into all these different permutations, a draw for them, a, a win for this team. For Chicago, we made it very simple. We know what we need to do, and we look for the first time all year as a group at the standings this week. We know we need three wins. For sure, and the fact that usually in the normal NWSL season, Chicago Red Stars will be completely out of it, but they're not. And the fact that they're still in amongst it that could potentially make it, I think it's asking a lot for them to potentially make the playoffs. But the fact they made it the last seven seasons in a row is testimony to the club and how good they are. They have those solid foundations. But at the same time, you have to be better. And I think during this season, they've just fallen short a lot. They've conceded a lot of goals this year. And I said I was quite surprised with regards to the, the back line they had. Obviously, Tiana Davidson was coming off that injury as well. Casey Kruger. So they've conceded a lot of goals. The fact that they're still in amongst it, potentially, but they have to win out. There's a lot of permutations that we're going to see for a lot of these games. We've only three games to go, but they definitely have to win out. All this year, coaches have thought 32, 33, 34 points. Is that the line? For Chicago to win out, we'll put them at 30, and it might be enough. It's just been way too tight. That top six to pull away. All the while for racing Louisville, they know three good games, and they believe they are in. Kim Bjorkegren, second year at the helm, for racing Louisville a win tonight. They set the club win record. They've already set the club point record. Went to the Challenge Cup final. Kruger back to Nair. And it's been fun watching them build toward this moment where they are competitive in October. For sure, and I think with racing Louisville, by the time the Challenge Cup came around, you know, they'd had cross-country flight, they almost to play as you could see. Then we had that two and a half hour, you know, rain delay, and the players just looked a bit spent, and I felt for them when I was down on the sideline. But I think he's done a really good job. I think defensively, they're solid. And they've got three iron women within their team. That just about says it all, really. The stability, the foundations are there, and I think they can grow and build from that. You know, players like Tembi Catalano are just on the bench tonight, obviously playing for South Africa in those games. You spoke about it, Mike, before, because I was saying, well, why would she not be playing? Yeah. Because she'd be one of my first names down on the team sheet because she's a player that you'd fear going up against. If you're an outside back, you'd fear going up against her. You made a really good point saying she's going to come in based upon, obviously, the minute she played with her national team. But I think he's managed this team really well. And they made the Challenge Cup final, and that's all you can ask for, really. And obviously, if they get into the playoffs, I would say that's kind of far better than they did last year. Absolutely. Who's more jet-lagged in North Carolina, racing Louisville or you? Oh, don't, don't talk to me about jet lag, Mike. <laughs> Sorry, partner. The Yankee. Hawking. Aaron Wright's 150th regular season appearance, all for Chicago. She's the mainstay. Big diagonal that does find Kruger after a deflection from Malay. Kruger turning on the Jets. Kruger back, deflected, and line. Kruger watches this out for a corner. Casey came to play tonight. Absolutely brilliant play from Casey Kruger. Fantastic down that left-hand side. Dynamic going 1v1 up against Leicester. She had no chance. Fantastic play. That's exactly what you want. Flying behind that mask like a superhero. Must be so uncomfortable playing in. The most important thing is you can play right. and that you're safe, so you play in whatever, but it must be quite uncomfortable to play in something like that. The Yankee ball flipped back across by Stevens. Again, I was quite, you know, not complimentary of Yankee's first ball into the box, but the last three have been excellent. I can't quite understand how Stevens, again, racing Louisville, have allowed her to be free on the back post, similar to how Casey Kruger was free on the other corner before. I can't quite understand that because defensively, they usually really, really organized this back line with Ersig and Leicester. So they need to take care of the Chicago Red Stars on, on corner kicks for sure because Stevens made a good connection with that, but she was wide open. Hawking dribbles that along the chalk. Three unbeaten for the first time all year for Chicago. They have gotten hot at just the right moment. That's out for a throw. And you know, Chris said it, not just then, they said Chicago, uh, Chicago and Kansas City for that matter. Bottom two in this league, do you want Dabinia coming to your place to start the playoffs? Do you really? If you look at this Chicago team, where they were in the middle of the summer, 
anyone would love that matchup. Where they are right now, I don't know about that. Yeah, I agree with you, Mike. I agree with Chris Petroselli. I think it's almost probably as frustrating as a coach because you think, well, why didn't this happen sooner? Yeah. But all you can ask is you're resilient and you continue to do those things. And I asked him that question. I said, when you're losing games, you know, 5-0 or conceding yeah. a, lot of, a lot of goals, what do you do? Because it's difficult. From a player's perspective, when you lose and you continuously lose, it's hard. And you find the characters within your team during those moments and you have to continue to push. And they can, you know, he's got probably one mind, one eye on next season as well thinking what do they need. I think Mallory Swanson being out this season was a major, major player for them. Should be a major player for any team, but major catalyst for their, especially scoring goals for this team. So that was massive for them to be missing her. Because with her, who knows what they could have done. Kruger siphoned off the ball from DeMello. Strength and speed and guts tonight from Kruger. Slips inside. Layered over for Recaro. St. George. Chicago has started off with an excellent 20 minutes. Can they put the exclamation point on it and grab the lead? Malazzo. Serving, chested down, kept away. Nagasato was near it. St. George, now Recaro. Kruger. Bianchi. Casey Kruger has been exceptional. He's opening 20 minutes. Not a bad effort from Bianchi. It was always kind of sailing up. She called it almost too well. But Casey Kruger has been absolutely brilliant. Malay and Leicester can't get anywhere near her. She has that tenaciousness, that tenacity to be able to be here. You know, finds it here to Bianchi. Almost, you know, she catches it really well, to be fair. But in the end, just kind of had a little bit too much on it. But Casey Kruger has been brilliant. And she had to play the good soldier a lot this year, moving inside to center back, switching between a, a three and a five, and it was whatever the team needed. And in this 4-2-3-1 they've established tonight, she has been running that line. She has, and she's been really direct. You can see she knows she's got the beating of Malay on that left-hand side, and she wants the ball every single time it's there. And also, it's one thing wanting the ball and making good decisions in those areas as well. And I think she's done that. And I think getting picked for the national team again will do so much for her confidence because it's not an easy situation. I'm sure Chris Petroselli was delighted to a certain degree when Tiana Davidson and Casey Kruger didn't get selected because from a coach's perspective yourself, selfish, you want the team to win. But individually, you know, arguably you want them to be there as well. And I think they've done had a decent season so far. Ball poked through. And a skip up to Nair. That's why Nair makes the big bucks. Tosses a 40-yard ball on a dime, because why not? Pukuyamsa. Monahan. She will go 1v1. Slides by St. George. Recovered by Nagasato. Just ran out of room. Unlucky from Nagasato. I like her. She has the ability to almost slow everything down when the ball comes around her. Paige Monahan's getting into good areas. I think I want to see Savannah DeMello and have a little bit more impact on these games. I think since the World Cup. You know, you can talk about almost like a World Cup hangover, but I think Borges was excellent. Savannah de Mello was excellent before the World Cup, and then since those players have come back, I don't think Savannah de Mello is having the impact on games that she should be having. Nadim charging through, putting that on frame, and it's muscled away by Nair. That got in on her hands way too fast. Blistering stuff from Nadim. And this gets out. It's a fantastic touch from Nadia Nadim to get it going. A nice little reverse pass back as well. You'd always expect to listen there to have that one covered on the near post. I think, again, I say all the time, misconception is goalkeepers should never get beaten on the near post. I don't agree with that. I think if it's a good strike and it's got a lot of power and it's difficult for the keeper. But that one seemed to move last minute because it caught a listen there off guard. You did see the score if you were peeking at the top left corner of your screen. Washington 
and Kansas City. Washington can only improve their stock. They cannot clinch tonight. Kansas City, a loss, plus an Orlando win and a Louisville win would be enough to see them out. But a draw or a win on their part, and they are assured another week alive. Inside Pickett. Pickett went for the near post. And that ripples the outside of the netting. Goals, by the way, Dabinia, penalty for Kansas City. And Ule Mata Sar scores in the 52nd, the French international. That game also on Paramount Plus. And there's still about 25 minutes to go there. Regrettably for some fans, some fans want to watch every game. Not everyone has the luxury. And so trying to keep everyone appraised of what's going on out here. I'm glad you're doing it, the permutations, <laughs> Mike, and I'm not. I tell you that, but it's exciting stuff. It's absolutely brilliant that there's all to play for. I think when you're a fan of an individual team, these moments are such a nervy moment. I think from a player's perspective, I love these types of moments when you're looking to, towards the playoffs. When it's not in your hands, that's when it's difficult. Into the area to Mello. Louisville certainly looked a bit better in the last five minutes in those final third areas. We can see Davis, DeMello also getting on the ball in those areas. That's exactly what they need to do, and Nadia and Nadim. In those danger areas, in, a, in around the penalty spot where you can see she is now, that's exactly where you need Nadia and Nadim. Hagasato touches free. Hang in front of Verseg, finding St. George. You know, the biggest concern for Chris Petroselli was the midfield of racing, and I'm sure when he got the availability report and didn't see Borges or Howell available to play tonight, he thought, well, this is a totally different game than the first three we've played. For sure, and Tembi Catalana on the bench as well. Those types of things. Pippi Yamsa is going for goal! Hit the crossbar! Oh, wow, what a hit! That's twice that they've tattooed the woodwork tonight. Absolutely brilliant strike. We saw an early one from Fisher. Yuki Yamsa picks this one out really well. A listener has no chance. Fantastic strike. So unlucky. That's stupendous if it actually hits the net. I don't know how much goalkeepers really decide based on who has the ball, how far out they're willing to play, but Yuki Yamsa has only scored once this year. It's going to take a really good strike to beat any type of goalkeeper, but listen there from there. But I think it was a fantastic strike. Piki Yamsa called it really well. She had no chance to listen there. You can see similar to the Fisher moment. Ball knocked away by Pickett. That checked up awkwardly off the ground. It is recovered by Chicago. Lund rips it out of the air and Hawking has been dangerous in this opening half hour. Great positioning of Hawking to get into those areas. Comfortable save in the end from Lund. Hawking didn't really quite catch hold of it. But similar to what I was saying about getting into those danger areas, we can see their Hawking for the Chicago, Chicago Red Stars having so much impact from those danger areas. Similarly to the other end, that's where Racing Louisville need to have the ball in those areas. Nadia Nadim will score goals if you provide a service. That's my concern. Apart from Carlson Pickett, where is the ball coming from to get Nadia Nadim a goal? There was the ball in the Nadim, but stepped away by Wright. game has felt like a big dose of well-played desperation. So often these games, at the end of the season when a result is necessary, can feel unwieldy or chaotic. This has been the appropriate amount of that with some really positive movements. Yeah, and that play on the ball right now, Nagasato, the touch, you can see both these teams. Just because Chicago Red Stars are bottom of the table in 12, it doesn't mean they're just going to sit back and allow Louisville to have the ball. You can see the pressure, high pressure. The only thing I will say, there's a lot of turnovers yeah. from both teams within this game. I don't think we've seen four or five consecutive passes happen within this game. And Chris Petroselli mentioned it himself, giving away the ball too cheaply. They were giving away the ball too cheaply six weeks ago or so. That's something they worked on in practice, in training, to make that better. By the way, bottom of the table, Chicago win today. 
They pull level with Louisville. It hits that close. Piku Yamsa in tight quarters. Malay. Davis dices back. Louisville's two best chances if it would work tonight. Nagasato. Oh, Megging Vikayamsa. She's gone. Peers over both sides. This hit over the bar. Absolutely brilliant play from Nagasato. I love this type of creativity. Absolutely brilliant. You can see St. George is holding her run on the right hand side. I think that the ball that was the ball that should have been played. There was two players that could have played the ball. It fell to Bianchi in the end and Nagasato. It was almost like they didn't want to play the ball down the right hand side. Davidson, Erseg, Hawking, Stevens, Yamsa arrives, Erseg, and now Lester. Chicago's final home match of the regular season, Decision Day, October 15th, against O.L. Reign. For tickets, Head to chicagoredstars.com slash tickets to purchase yours today. All six games in unison starting at 4 Central, 5 Eastern on October 15th. Are we together on that? I, I don't even know what game I'm calling that day. I just know where I'm. <laughs> Try being on UK time. I don't even know my own name like, anymore. <laughs> With Sanderson, Leanne, Mike Watts. <laughs> <laughs> Monahan, oh, that's miss hit out of the back. That's been the real Achilles heel this year. Fisher, Fisher! Louisville likes something from outside the penalty area tonight. You can feel it. Yeah, they certainly are not hanging about with these strikes from long distance. I said it's going to take quite a remarkable strike to beat. Alyssa Nair, a fantastic strike again from Fisher. We've seen this may be something they've seen on the film when they're watching the Chicago Red Stars, but this is fantastic from Fisher. Picking up that ball in that area, almost, you can see Alyssa Nair had it covered, but almost. Quick restart by St. George. Hawking got a finger wag, but no card. On that last play, ball through. St. George caught on the other end of that. And caught Lund on the way by. Again, absolutely brilliant play from Casey Kruger. She almost outran all of her teammates because everybody checked towards the ball. She managed to break the lines through about three or four players. And then the only option was to St. George, and it was nearly a fantastic ball. St. George did check her run from Bianchi. St. George! St. George! Whoa! From a tight angle, pulls Chicago ahead! Absolutely brilliant strike. I'm surprised they're not checking this one on VAR because it looks slightly offside to me, but it's a fantastic strike from St. George. I was quite critical of when she got into this position early in the game and didn't make the right decision. This time makes a fantastic decision and puts it in the back of the net. It's a fantastic strike. Oh. I think it's offside. From what I saw, I think it's offside. She almost overran it again. It's a fantastic strike. Well, can, they're always watching. You can see all the players are kind of lunge looking to see as if to say, are we not going to look at that? You can see St. George is almost looking, thinking I'm going to get back to the halfway line and then maybe could take this one away. 
It, it looks offside to me. It looked offside when I first saw it. Yep. Sergei Demianchuk will go over to the monitor and take a look. Luis Guardia is the VAR. Luis's assistant tonight, Fordham alum, Tom Felice. And that's why I was kind of holding back a little bit on how complimentary I was being of the goal, because it's a fantastic strike from St. George, but it looked offside to me when the ball was played through. And I think this one's going to be chalked off, unfortunately. I could be wrong, but that's just what I see. Well, we get the benefit of seeing basically the cut of the grass, basically providing a really clear line right down the field. Because if you look at where Urseg and the other outside back closer versus where St. George is, if the line is straight on the ground. It's certainly taken him a while to, to figure out. It isn't obvious, but it just was my opinion from when the, where the ball was played. It just looked like she maybe went a little bit too early, St. George. You can see they're watching the, the full play back here. And we see what the referee is seeing on that monitor. I think on both plays she went too early. You know, they've shown one play from one angle, they've shown it from another angle as well. And I think she goes early. If you look at the cut of the grass right there, it looks like she's held on side in that instance, right? This one is actually a difficult one yeah. for the referee to make. It is a goal. Chicago takes the lead. And Carson Pickett is all Louisville fans right now, I think. Including myself, she has that confusion look on her face, similarly to what I feel. I guess they were checking the both of the actions to see if the ball was consistently in play on both of them. To me, she looked offside on both of them. Couldn't pay me enough to do this job. And what an enormous moment this is in the playoff race. It's a fantastic strike from St. George, taking nothing away from it. The goal's been given. I personally think she went a little bit too early. Lester and Ersig, maybe they stepped up too late, but from what I saw from my eyes, it looked like she was offside, but it's been given, and it's a fantastic strike. Was the dress blue or gold? Changes depending on which day you look at it, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's how it was for me, anyway. <laughs> Kruger. Aiming for Stevens. That is a high boot. You know, ultimately, if you're Chicago, you feel like after all the pressure you've managed to attain in this game, you finally got your goal. And if you're Louisville, you're probably thinking, conversely, we've hit the, the crossbar twice. Nadim put one right on there. And here we are down a goal when the, the team on the field certainly believes, as you do, that that wasn't, on, that that wasn't onside to begin with. So kind of a weird confluence of emotions, I would imagine, out there right now. Yeah, for sure. I think although they have, I think it's been a pretty evenly matched game. I said I think there's been far too many turnovers. Yeah. I think both teams are certainly going at it but they're not consistently making consecutive passes. And I think both teams at this moment in time have been pretty level. I think the long distance strikes from Louisville have been pretty good. Other than that, they haven't really caused a lot of problems to the listener. I think Casey Kruger's caused a lot of problems. Now Kruger defensively will not be able to keep this in a corner for racing. Picker Yamsa hit that big ball to Davis, who went shoulder to shoulder with Kruger. Good recovery from Kruger as well, and Davis was getting down that right-hand side. I think Casey Kruger's had an excellent, excellent first half, defensively and on the attack. 
She looks like she's got that extra spring in her step as well. Well, Carson Pickett can find retribution right here. Pickett delivers, Ursig! Wide. Great ball into the box, fantastic header. It's always going to be a difficult one to get on frame based upon Abby Ursig running away from goal in this moment. But it's a fantastic ball from Carson Pickett. And it's a really good header in the end. I love the pace of the ball that Carson Pickett seems to generate on her balls because then when you do head it on frame, there's not, you know, the power's still there right. because the power of the ball that she puts in is so good. Sometimes when the players are crossing the ball into the box, it's not got enough pace on it. So then by the time the player heads the ball, the goalkeeper just collects it pretty comfortably. Kruger sends Stevens on an expedition. Stevens undeterred, feels Hawking behind. Penelope Hawking opens up, fires Ersig. The block. Pressure arriving from Kruger, rips it back. Going to see Davis recover. I'm seasick. Again, fantastic play from Davis and Kruger, defensively and on the attack. Both players going out hit 1v1. Slip forward on to Fisher. The numbers are good here, but Ersig defends as if she's three players all by herself. Turned Nagasato away and stymied it. Given away awkwardly between the legs of Pika Yamsa. And recovered by DeMello. Spots Fisher. Swings the door back open, seeking Monaghan, and back from Davidson. You can see what Fisher is trying to do there, play the ball to Monaghan. I just think it was not the greatest of executions in the end. But going back to Abby Erzig, having a player like that in your team that's consistent, that defends, always seems to be in the right position, always seems to be in the right place, I think that says a lot. This back line very, very rarely changes, only usually changes based upon an injury. Oh, turned over. If Nadine can get there, she does. Davis, Kruger took the village for Chicago to win this back. Kruger got knocked off the ball. Play on. Free kick racing. Yamsa. St. George. Ricaro. This high pressure is how Louisville dominated the first three games between the teams this year. Chicago only just got their first goal against Louisville in four games this season. Stevens. Kruger. Bianchi. Hawking. Bianchi came free. Stevens leaped beneath her foot. She's 
barely snuck through. And now on to Kirsten Davis. Attacking Davidson. Not a shot away that bounces in the air. This is not the only game ongoing right now. Kansas City and Washington is in the 82nd minute of their game. Meanwhile, NWSL action continues through Monday. It's like an extended weekend. Angel City takes on the Orlando Pride, 10 Eastern time. You'll see it on CBS Sports Network. Angel City, their second Monday night football game of the year. They had the game in June against Chicago, although that was really one of the defining moments in a positive way for the Chicago season. Ava, Ava Cook, multiple goals in the first half of that game. And guess who's doing that game on Monday night, Mike? Me. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> but I'm not with you. No. That's okay, don't cry. <laughs> I'll watch. You better. Sorry, the equalizer for the spirit after Dabinia's penalty in the other game. It affects the playoff line itself. And in doing so, essentially affects both these teams. It's also Kansas City potentially inching onto their deathbed with one game remaining. Now there are two games remaining. They'll have a number of elimination scenarios next week if that draw holds, but they would still faintly be alive. Stoppage time presented by Verizon. Three added minutes. Monahan slowed it, but Nagasato. We saw Savannah DeMello there picking up the ball in those areas. I think it's, it's quite an interesting journey that she's been on because obviously she's got picked for the World Cup roster after never been pick, picked before playing and then now she's come back with more pressure. And I don't think she's had the impact since she's come back that she probably would have liked and hoped for. And I think she's a top player. She just needs to find her way again a little bit because when she gets going, we know she's hard to stop. But I don't think she's really had the impact that she would have liked on games since coming back from the World Cup. I don't think anyone can really to, to be thrown directly, forget just your national team debut, getting thrown into the World Cup and the preemptive matches there. Hawking. Hawking onto her right. Ursic denies. Ricaro. Nagasato widens out. Pickett will pick her up. St. George already has a monster goal tonight. Malazzo. But I imagine her whole life changed in about 10 minutes when she got that call from Flacco Ananovsky. Yeah, and it's incredible. It's a fantastic journey. And I think absolutely sometimes not everybody's going to agree with the decisions that coaches make on team selections and squad selections. She went there, and I, she, I think she did a relatively good job. But the pressure is there now. And once you get picked for the US Miss national team or any national team, more eyes on you and the consistency of your performances have to be better than everybody's watching. Away by Monaghan. away if you're Louisville what are you changing other than maybe personnel you know you've got Katlana among the options on the bench yeah I think that's a matter of I think she'll probably potentially she could come on at halftime but maybe in around the 60th minute that's when usually coaches make those types of substitutions I don't I think in the final third it just hasn't really worked based upon service to this player Nadia and Nadine Nadine beaming firing had a little twist on it there. Collects and takes us to halftime. Chicago has saved truly their best for last. They lead at halftime and they could be within just three points of the line if this all goes well.
Yeah, and you've got to give them credit. I think they started the game really well. Chris Petroselli will be delighted going in at 1-0. I still think it's a little bit of a suspect goal to have been given, but they're 1-0 up and deservedly so. I think other than that, it's been a pretty evenly matched game. I think the possession, I think there's been far too many turnovers in this game, but you can't fault the players' determination going at it. You know, no one's really taking their foot off the gas at all during this game. Teams head down the tunnel here in Bridgeview. Louisville may cede the three-point advantage they had on Chicago and cede the high ground as it pertains to trying to make the postseason while Chicago looks to go four unbeaten and into the final two games of the regular season with truly everything to play for. And St. George goal in the 34th minute, the difference maker, her third of the season. And the Red Stars hold the lead at halftime. Good crowd tonight had a lot to cheer about in favor of this Chicago team. Most notably, of course, for the goal. Bianca St. George kind enough to join us now from the field. Uh, Bianca, walk me through the goal and the enormity of that for Chicago's season as it stands right now. I mean, as you can tell, we're hungry. We're hungry to win. We want to finish this season strong. I mean, it's amazing to see the progress we've done as a team. We had it rough this year, but it's finally coming together. We're learning to play together. We're learning our tendencies, and it, it was a team goal. I know I finished, but it was the whole effort of the team. Bianca Leon Sanderson here. Are you surprised with the amount of space you're getting down the right-hand side? You're doing a really good job of holding your run, but are you surprised with the amount of joy you're getting down there because Carson Pickens playing a little bit higher up? Yeah. I mean, you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> I love going on the line. I like to switch it up, do double runs. I do everything. I try to switch it up. Um, I know I'm playing against a good defender, so you have to do something out of the box sometimes. So it's fun to experiment and try new things and see it works out. So. May VAR forever be in your favor. Thank you, Bianca. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so much. <laughs> There's your goal score in the 33rd minute. Katie Lund and Louisville are now against the ropes. This was precisely the performance that Chicago's been waiting for. Chicago a 1-0 lead at halftime. We'll return to this Ally NWSL broadcast after this on CBS Sports.
Welcome back to the NWSL on CBS Sports. The Red Stars, a 1-0 lead over racing with controversy. It's St. George in the 33rd. VAR approves Red Stars lead with Leanne Mike. Let's get you caught up on what's going on around the league right now. It's all about playoffs. Here are the elimination scenarios. Keep it real simple if you're Chicago. You keep the win, even a draw, no chance you're out going into next week. Kansas City, this game has literally just gone final. Trinity Rodman in the first minute of stoppage time. The winner for Washington. And now if Louisville comes from behind to win, it opens the door for their potential elimination if Orlando win as well. Portland, I can make this even easier. Win and you're in. Draw, there's still ways that you clinch. San Diego, win and some results go your way. Same for Gotham. All that in mind, we look at the NWSL standings. They're presented by CarMax. You know, Leanne, this is a, a little compact at this point. Right now, it would be 10 points top to bottom. Yeah, and I have a feeling this is going to completely change. You know, after the weekend, we started this game. Chicago Red Stars are in 12. You know, now Kansas City current are currently bottom. And it's genuinely all to play for. When you speak to coaches, Mike, you say to them, are you thinking about the playoffs? So, like, we take eight, each game at a time. And it sounds cliche, but it's the reality. And that line may only move by one point or two points at most because O.L. Reign and North Carolina play one another tomorrow. We're getting to the tail end of Rapino's career. Do they even make the postseason in the form they're in? North Carolina was in control of the Shield three weeks ago. Wow. Yeah, it's incredible, really. Obviously, North Carolina winning the Challenge Cup as well just a couple of weeks ago. But I'm really looking forward to this one. As things stand right now in the standings, it's fifth versus sixth, you know, in that playoff run. So both these two teams have really good players. Caroline, Megan Rapino, brilliant players. So the fans here in Chicago waiting their turn. Could they possibly still find their way in? We'll return to this Ally NWSL broadcast after this with first half highlights on CBS Sports. We got highlights, a lot of them. Chicago racing, Mike Lee, and let's start in the sixth minute of play, shall we? Yeah, I like this play. You know, you see Davis get the ball here. It did set up really nicely for Nadia Nadine to bike it. Wasn't the greatest execution in the end, but I love it when players try stuff like this because if you don't try, if you don't shoot, you don't score, right? So it was a fantastic effort in the end. And then this one here, Pickett picks up the ball. It's a fantastic strike from Fisher. 
absolutely brilliant. We've seen them do this a couple of times in the first half race in Louisville where they pick up the ball in those areas. Try and pick a Yumsha as well, had an opportunity hitting from those long distances. And this is the goal. I still think it looks offside to me, but we'll focus on the fact that St. George gets into this area and it's a really good strike in the end. I think she had a lot of chance and a lot of time, more time than probably normal with Abby Ursia kind of trying to recover, but 1-0. St. George gives the old slipperoo and Chicago a one nothing advantage on racing. The second half is coming up after these messages on CBS Sports. Let's take a look at this. The windup and the 3-2 offering. That's a strike in my book. Far, far better than I could ever do, Mike. <laughs> I wouldn't even trust myself out there. I think it's pretty good for Megan Rapino. Join us Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern on CBS, OL Rain in Washington. It's Megan Rapino's last regular season home game at Lumen Field. Celebrations have already started in Seattle and around the league. Culminate Friday in prime time on CBS. All the while, we got 45 minutes left to play here, and for what it's worth, the last regular season game period for Rapino against Chicago. And both these teams, if this holds, may have a lot to play for come October 15th. Yeah, for sure, and we saw Kim Bjorkakren sent his team out pretty early. They were out there lined up, ready to go for this second half. The messages were clear. They need to win this game for sure and play better than they did in the first half, create more opportunities in the final third in those areas. Both teams unchanged at halftime. Pickett 
Monahan. St. George chopped at by Monahan. Chicago 6 1 0 this year when they score first. The impetus truly on them now. To what extent are you willing to start to absorb a bit more? Are you still willing to play this open of a game if you're Chicago holding on to a lead? It's difficult because we've said during the you know this season they've they've leaked so many goals. The Chicago Red Stars has been quite surprising. But once they get going, they can be really, really good. I think certain players within this team, we could talk about Mallory Swanson so much because she's a massive loss. But there's other players that have had to step up. So Georgia stepped up for sure in moments. Casey Kruger's been excellent tonight. It's been a real shared team effort. So I think they just need to continue to do what they're doing. Don't give away the ball too cheaply in certain areas. I know Chris Petroselli was kind of expressing that as well, but we can see it with our own eyes that they give away the ball in their defensive third far too cheaply. I think they've done a better job of that in this game and in their last three games as well. Pick it. Forces this wide of St. George. Nagasato trying to get inside of Ursig and ultimately slipped down. Frustration evident there. Nagasato is getting into really good areas. We saw in the first half that little bit of trickery that she did to nutmeg Pukuyamsa, but I think she's had a fantastic game so far. And when she gets into those areas, like I said, she has an ability to settle the game down. Everything seems to slow down around her. She always makes the right decision nine times out of ten. Nagasato returns St. George. St. George! Not the greatest of executions in the end for St. George, but I like the skill. A few moments ago, she did a double drag back. So she's got a lot of confidence from that goal. But in those areas, that's exactly where you want her to be. So George picking up the ball and striking the ball. We've seen a lot of really long distance strikes tonight in this game. Something we don't usually see a lot. Stevens turns. Denied by Ursig. And she sounded confident when we spoke to her at halftime, didn't she? She felt like she'd done a little bit of everything in that half. Nagasato, that deflects. Pick it for the end line. That'll escape for a corner. Yeah, I've enjoyed that 1v1 battle between Carson Pickett and St. George because Carson Pickett likes to get forward, likes to deliver the balls into the box. And obviously St. George is, is pushing on as well. So there's that space that Pickett is kind of leaving him behind. Yankee to the corner flag. really grown into this season. Bianchi offers Nadim, had her down from St. George, Davis. Louisville already starting to contemplate changes. Notably, it's the first start since the middle of August for Pickett. So change maybe in her near future. Katlana is up as well. Hawking, really incisive from Chicago. They've got numbers. Stevens shifts it through Hawking. All got deflected off her shin and back to Lund. That was an opportunity for sure. They created the overload. It was almost a three versus two. I think in the end, the decision making wasn't the best, which allowed Louisville to get back and recover the ball. I think the Chicago Red Stars need to make the most of their opportunities when they're getting into that final third in those areas to make slightly better decisions. By the time it fell to Penelope Hawking, I feel like it should have come a bit sooner to her. The first ball should have come as opposed to the secondary ball. finds Lund. A 
the fifth time in the last 11 months. Chicago led at halftime of a league game. Won the four previous instances. Nagasato, that by Pickett. Couldn't retain, however. Bianchi. Hawking, Nagasato. Right, wrong. Kruger. Mello. Dean pressure on Davidson there. I think one of Racing Louisville's problems this season, I think defensively they've been really solid in those areas, but I think on the attack, I think sometimes they've not been able to put the ball in the back of the net. I think we saw Savannah DeMello there picking up the ball very deep, trying to find Nadia and Nadim, and I think with Nadia and Nadim, if you provide her a service, she will score goals. She hasn't really had that in this game. Well, here are the changes for racing. They're going to bring in Picorni and Katlana off the bench. Katlana coming off 180 minutes against the U.S. national team during this most recent international break. That's the obvious one. Comes on for Monaghan. Like for like switch outside. Yeah, I like this substitution. It absolutely makes sense. This is the one that's interesting because it goes against a lot of what we've seen in the past. Davis off, Picorni on. So maybe they're about to go to a three back, shift an outside back higher, and then bring a, a trio into that back three now. Yeah, it seems that way. I think when Temi Catalano comes into this game as well, she seems to almost have a free role. You know, she stays central. She sometimes goes out wide. But we know now, Casey Kruger knows she's going to have to be on it, which will maybe pin her back a little bit more, Casey Kruger, because she's had quite a field day down this left-hand side. But now she has to have, in the back of her mind, to be cut Lana's back on. All pulled away by Malazzo. Pick it. Malay steps forward. Katlana, Malay, higher up the field than she's been all night. Back to Katlana. Serves the cross. First ball's away. Pick it back. Fisher. Fisher denied by Bianchi. DeMello. Katlana lines up Kruger and wins a set piece for racing. You can see Katlana already causing problems down this right-hand side. I said it will probably force Casey Kruger back a little bit more because she's had a field day down the left getting up and down. But Demi Kotlana is so dangerous. Every time she picks up the ball, I question her consistency in that final third area early in the season because I think for a player of her ability, she should be getting far more goals and far more assists. But she always looks dangerous. I wouldn't want to be going up against her. That's for sure. Kruger's got to be thinking again. I just saw her all last week. Yeah. Pick it. That bounces all the way through. No one the wiser. Untouched. That's such a good ball from Carson Pickett. I spoke about it early in the game. I love her delivery. The power, the pace, everything this ball had everything on it. I cannot believe none of her teammates have been on the back post. I can't believe it. Vicky <laughs> Yomsa is looking over her shoulders as if to say, why is nobody there? That has to be someone's role and responsibility. Something so simple to be on the back post and would have had a simple tap in. It was a brilliant ball. And it, it kind of, that's that's a bullet dodge for Chicago because set piece defending has been quite an endeavor this year for the Red Stars. Yeah, for sure. That's an understatement, I think, on set pieces. And even in the game against Angel City, they were lucky that Hammond didn't put that in the back of the net. She should have put it in, and it would have been a different story. There launches to Kruger. It's a foul. Hawking got taken down. No one in this game, by the way, is on accumulation warning. Louisville have two that sit on four yellows, Howell and Borges. So if they come in next week and pick up a yellow, they would miss the regular season finale. No one else in danger of that yet. Oh, she gets fouled and she pops out. 
spinning around. Stevens played it wide. St. George is in an offside position to begin with. She, she lives on that offside line, doesn't she? She does, and that's what I was talking to her about, the discipline of being able to hold your run. It's difficult because when you have a lot of space on that side, on the right or the left, it's difficult to know when to make that run, but just holding it a little bit longer can be all the difference. But we were just speaking about, you know, the amount of goals Chicago Red Stars conceded. I think equally, you have to keep the ball at the other end of the pitch. I think it's easy to point the thing fingers at defenders when you concede goals, and they have conceded a lot of goals they shouldn't have this season, but I think they have to do better at maintaining possession higher up the field of play. Malazzo intervened, throw off McCorney. What buttons can Kim York again press down the stretch here? McCorney, Nadim, right at there. Could not have hit that cleaner, but spot on the goalkeeper. And that all came from Savannah DeMello. Absolutely brilliant play. Picking up the ball in that left-hand pocket in between the lines. Fantastic ball out to Bacorni. And Nadia Nadim caught this one really well. Really, really well. Good play from Racing Louisville. They've gotten more aggressive. Now on the cusp of the final third, recover the ball again. Carson Pickett. Fisher. Pickett, more space now. Sends the cross, Nadim went up for it. This is a defensive header, leads to a corner, and Nadim took a shot at the tail end of that, slowly back to her feet. Good defending from the Chicago Red Stars, but I feel like they have to have better, more players in the area in those zones. Nadia Nadim's going up against four players in that area. I think the other players just need to anticipate and get into those danger areas. Really good ball in, but you can see here she's on her own. I want to see Kotlana, even Malay, anticipating that ball into the box. Pick it. Near post. Header away. DeMello! DeMello went down! Penalty! The foul from Bianchi. And DeMello wins a spot kick for Louisville with a chance to pull even. I think it was a penalty. I think Bianchi got the wrong side of Savannah DeMello. Savannah DeMello knew if I get to this ball first, there's a good chance it could be a penalty. And when I saw it in his first instance, looks like a penalty to me. On that second replay, it looks like a coming together of players, but I think Savannah DeMello looked like she just got to the ball a little bit quicker than Bianchi. Nadia Nadim steps to the spot. Louisville's season doesn't ride on just one kick, but it's not that far off. Nadim has not scored in a year. September 16th against Orlando of 2022. Off another knee injury. The VAR check continues, as with all penalties. This is what they're looking at back in the replay center. And I, I do agree with you for what it's worth. The Yankees just simply late to it. Yeah, it doesn't look clear and obvious to a certain degree. I think she just gets there a little bit quicker than Bianchi. But then I look at it also on the flip side. If that's anywhere outside the box, would this have been given as a foul? If anything, I might be easier to give that. Someone would be getting a foul for that, no? If it if it ends with DeMello on the ground, they're going to look at it. I have a feeling that he's not going to he's not going to give it. When I first saw it, it looks like a penalty. And then I think they're going to take it away. So you're seeing what they're looking at right now, all the angles available for VAR. It's a high risk, 
tackle in this area from Bianchi. The way I look at it, Bianchi is the wrong side of Savannah De Mello. In this instance, she's the wrong side. It looked like Savannah De Mello got to the ball a little bit quicker than Bianchi. Then the more you see it, you start to see potentially Bianchi and De Mello hitting the ball at the same time. But I do think it's a high-risk tackle in the penalty spot. And it goes back to my other analogy, Mike. If it's anywhere outside the area, does Savannah De Mello get a free kick there? I think she does. I think she does. Yeah. But I have a feeling that the referee is going to take this one away. This is one of the most important VAR decisions of the entire season. So does she get the ball first? And whether she does or she doesn't, tackle might feel imprudent in real time. I honestly don't think it becomes any easier the more you see it from this angle. No. The way I see it, I think Savannah De Mello gets to the ball first just by a millisecond. Right. But then, like I said, if this is 10 yards this way, we I think the referee about this, gives that a foul. A I think it's a free kick. On, yeah. Well, I'm sitting here thinking, doesn't it, it, it looks like it, in my mind, hits off to Mello, and then Bianchi gets a touch immediately thereafter, but... Wow. Here is a season-changing decision. No penalty. Is what we're initially told. Yeah, the, the crowd didn't understand either. Yeah, now they know. No foul. And Chicago gains the ball and does not face the penalty. There's been a couple of really big calls within this game. The offside call on St. George. Now the penalty kick. I think sometimes you have to have a little bit of luck, and I certainly think Chris Petroselli's side have a lot of luck within this game, but I think you make your own luck in football. Yeah, within this game, maybe some luck, they'd argue, over the course of the year. Quite the opposite. It's one of those ones with that penalty. When I first saw it, I'm saying it's a penalty. You see it again, I'm saying it's a penalty. I see it five times, I think it's a penalty. Then for that moment of doubt, you think it might not be a penalty because does Bianchi get to the ball first? Yep. So it almost changes, but I still think, I personally think it was a penalty. Well, ultimately, VAR takes away that chance for Louisville. And Chicago have seen both VAR decisions, tight ones, very tight ones, go their way tonight. It's out beyond Malay. Ultimately, Louisville will be looking at themselves, not the monitor, when this night ends if they fail to take the points. It's all been there for them, and on the road of late, they have really struggled. One win in their last eight all competitions. That's the Challenge Cup semi against Seattle. And in the last five road games, they've only scored one goal. That's their worst mark in that span in franchise history. They seem flummoxed again tonight. Yeah, I think ultimately decisions will go against you. It's just a reality. I think you have to just take a look at yourself individually. What could I do better as a player? Did I maximize my ability during that game? And you have to look from within. I think a lot of teams, I think Chicago Red Stars have had moments like that during the season where they've conceded a lot of goals and it didn't seem to be working. You go back to the training field, you continue. It's like the definition of insanity. You know, they continue to do the same thing. Getting, they weren't getting different results. They conceded goals on set pieces. Then out of nowhere, Chicago Red Stars started to pick up results, defended better. 
not conceding as many goals and taking care of the ball. And sometimes during the season, there could be those light bulb moment, moments that you work on in practice every single day. It doesn't work, it doesn't work. You have to be persistent and it, eventually it does work out. Yankee started to dribble away with that, not so fast. Game high five chances created. She has been everywhere tonight. In a series where both coaches felt the midfield had been the difference in the three previous meetings. Louisville down two permanent starters due to injury. Bianchi picked up all the slack for Chicago. Ball put into play. It's going to bounce down awkwardly at the penalty spot. That's a foul from Nadia Nadim. Yeah, definite foul. I'm sure Nadia Nadim was thinking she was going to get her first goal back for being back from that ACL injury, was ready to take the penalty kick, and then it was obviously taken away. Well, listen there, a chance today to join just Nicole Barnhart. Some players with 38 clean sheets for one club. Tying the league record. Rarefied air. Katwana lost the handle under pressure. My pass is Yuki Nagasato out to St. George. Her goal standing the test of time for the moment. Again, in that moment, I think Casey Kruger has been exceptional. You can see Kotlana did really well to retrieve the ball from Casey Kruger, but then she recovered so, so well. She's had a brilliant game. Foul from Picorni. four assists this season. Yankee, Dursig, domineering header. Katlana. And Davidson under all that pressure. A reminder that racing's final home match of the regular season is next weekend, October the 6th against the Orlando Pride. For tickets, head to racingloufc.com and purchase yours tonight. In the NWSL table right now, Orlando one point ahead of racing Louisville. And if this result holds, just one point ahead of Chicago in seventh. That may end up feeling or potentially being an elimination game next week. Foot race. Nair. That's one thing that Tebby Colano, I think, is so, so good at, putting that pressure on, chasing down the ball when it's not in her favor, and creating something, making it happen. You know, it's whether it's forcing someone to kick it out of bounds, or that relentless pressure that she does, not just her attacking, but the defensive work is, is really, really admirable. Tamello is stripped. The ball from Nagasato, it starts Stevens the other way. Hawking spots the wide run, but Hawking going in alone. Hawking, a big hit from Lund, follows slide in. And Ursig gets in the way. It's offside either way. Really good play from Penelope Hawking. She was tenacious. She created the opportunity. It looked like she was potentially going to play the ball to the right-hand side. And then she didn't in the end. She went alone. And it was a good save in the end from Lund. You can see here, Ella Stevens, I love that way of pass. She's so, so good at that. Stevens, when she gets into those areas, you can see 
Hocking was trying to get the shot off. St. George was trying to follow up and was just offside. But the Chicago Red Stars are certainly not taking their foot off the gas. They're still trying to push for, for more. Drops in Ursig. Comfortable under that pressure from St. George. Ali Schlegel waiting to come in for Chicago. Will this find Hawking? Let's not forget the free agency list just came out. Chris Petroselli is looking at a new ownership group that just came in. There could be a lot of change if that's the will of this new ownership group. That, that happens in every pro sport. Everyone's got a lot to play for right now. They do, and you'd hope that the organizations will make their decisions based upon the whole season. It's an entirety. But it's certainly a nervy moment from a player's perspective because you're wondering if you're going to get protected. You don't know where you might be next season. Right. And that's a difficult moment to be in. And I've been in it myself where you don't know where you're going to be. You don't know where your teammates are going to be. But for sure, the Chicago Red Stars, if they were to make the playoffs and were to win out, and obviously the permutations of the other games, it'd be something quite remarkable. But I do think it's asking a lot. But they certainly have certain good foundations. They just need to build upon that. Getting back Mallory Swanson at some point will be massive for them as well. You can't help but think the way they're playing right now should give a lot of optimism. Forward for Malay. Drops this back. Picorni. Ball blasted across there. Had to ensure that that did not reach Nadim from DeMello. This think, is a corner. I think it was a comfortable save in the end from Alyssa Nair, but you could see Nardi and the team was just on the back shoulder of Turner Davison, and I think it was a good save in the end to parry it away from pressure, because you can see here, she had Nardi and the team right to the right of her. She's probably thinking about that. There's Schlegel, replaces Stevens. A lot of praise for Schlegel's performance off the bench, along with Cook and Matthews in the draw against Angel City. Louisville making a change as well. Corner. Punched away by Nair. Ball hit by Katlana and cleared. They brought in Uchenna Kanu off the bench. Driven forward again. Malay. Bianchi. Third sub, second window replaces Fisher. I think Fisher had a relatively good game. He saw she had a couple of good looks in the first half, taking those long distance strikes. Obviously, coming into this game for Borges was always going to be difficult with regards to the type of player. They're very different, Fisher and Borges. I think she did a, had a relatively good game, Fisher. Makanu coming into this game, I think it's a really, really good substitution for Racing Louisville to have. Pika Yamsa. Malay, gliding, pirouetting, Pacorni, that's away, Nagasato further, Lester. Katlana. Shifting through Davidson up to the task. Nagasato starts the break. Pukuyamsa weaving around. Comes down to Schlegel. It's 
two off the woodwork and five saves tonight from Alyssa Nair. Chicago a one nothing lead and in an attempt to continue the positive momentum, they're gonna bring Shayna Matthews off the bench. Scored the game tying goal in the 75th against Angel City. It's a really good finish as well, nice composure. Shayna Matthews and Cook coming off the bench in that game against Angel City and getting the goals. It's really important you have those types of players that can come in and make an impact. I think St. George had a good game. I'm surprised he's the player that's coming out of the game, but maybe that's based upon the amount of hard work she's done down that right-hand side. Notably, Matthews did play in Louisville a couple years ago. Ten appearances and a goal for the Jamaican international. Matthews scored just minutes after coming into the game two weeks ago. Louisville, a draw is better than nothing. If anything, you keep Chicago off your tail just a bit longer. They really needed the three tonight. Ball into the width. Kanu away from Katlana. That was right. This is a corner. And now, it was offside. It's nothing at all. One thing for sure, Racing Louisville will continue to push. They've got Kano in the game now. They've got Tempe Katlana in the game. Nadia Nadim needs a little bit more service. I want to see Savannah DeMello getting a little bit closer to Nadia Nadim, where she can kind of feed her and, and provide that service. But I've been impressed with the Chicago Red Stars with regards to when they went 1-0 up, they could have sat in, they could have dropped deep, allowed the race, allowed race of Louisville to come onto them. They didn't do that, they've kept pushing. Ally is proud to support this presentation of the National Women's Soccer League. Ally, do it right. Ursig. Splaying out Malay, catching Nagasato. <laughs> it's so simple, but you can't do that. It's such a phenomenal. I love America. Here. Yeah. <laughs> You're saying it's perhaps a, a bit saltier where you come from, those um, cheers? Yeah. It, it's a much nicer <laughs> chant here, put it, that, put it this way. Interchanging off Bianchi. DeMello. Shayna Matthews. And that's a tough out, but a card. That's really the first interaction she's had in the game. Clearly, it has to be for place on the field. I think this is extremely harsh. I really don't think there's much in this at all. I honestly don't even think it's a foul. If I'm being totally honest, I don't think she does anything wrong. But for it to be a yellow card, I have no idea how that's a yellow card. No idea. Set piece for racing. Hangs in the air, clearance. DeMello lets it bounce, turns away from Mercaro, and wins a free kick for racing. This is a really good area for racing Louisville to get a free kick. I, I, I don't see that as being a free kick. I don't think the referee's my friend tonight, Mike, if I'm being honest. But I, I don't think that's a foul. I, I just don't. 
But it's a really good area for racing Louisville. It's going to take something to beat Alyssa Nair from here. It's a fantastic area. Can you imagine? Not even Nadim. Nadim out of play. Join us in prime time on Saturday, November 11th, 8 p.m. Eastern. It's the Ally 2023 NWSL Championship on CBS. If you want to attend the match at Snapdragon Stadium in San Diego, purchase tickets now at Ticketmaster.com. Again, the Ally 2023 NWSL Championship is in prime time on CBS. Another thing I've enjoyed about the Chicago Red Stars in this game is how organized they've looked. They've looked really organized. They've been able to kind of stay in the same formation for most of the game. Casey Kruger's adapted a little bit in the second half because she's had to drop a little bit deeper based upon Kalana coming into this game and Kanu. So she hasn't been able to attack as much, but I think they've looked organized. They've kept the ball really well. They just have to see out the game now. Kanu. Away from DeMello. Matthews. Nagasato. Matthews, fleet of foot. Kotlana tracked that all the way back. Louisville cannot be eliminated tonight under any circumstance. Chicago, with at least a point, cannot either. And their elimination scenarios, if this result hold, will look more or less identical next week. Oh, 31 shots. That's not that many. What? <laughs> what are you kidding? This game has had it all. become intertwined with most every blade of grass tonight. Half of them are going to leave a mark on her kit somewhere. Off to the bench. Parker Goins. The human equivalent of drinking a Red Bull for racing Louisville now. Yeah, we've seen this as a substitution that Kim Bjorkegren makes quite often. And he has a really good bench. I think there's a lot of players on this Racing Louisville team that are good, really good role players, that know their roles and responsibilities. I think also having the types of impact players been able to bring off in this game. With Temi Kotlana, we know she usually start the game. Nadia Nadim going off, hasn't got her goal. She'll be disappointed with that. But getting more minutes under her belt, coming back from that injury is really important. First time she's attempted five shots in the game since August of last year. Ultimately, able to come away with the goal that would pull Louisville level. Thought she'd have a chance at the spot. But a penalty overturned. Kruger is back up. She has been awe-inspiring tonight. Casey Kruger. She's been fantastic. I think she's a brilliant player anyway, but I think the fact that she missed out on the World Cup, having to deal with that stuff mentally is not an easy thing to do during those moments, especially coming back, you know, she didn't have much time. If she was ready to go and to not to miss out on the World Cup is a difficult thing. Now it's amazing what can happen in the space of a couple of months. She continued to play well for Chicago Red Stars, got her opportunity again for the national team, and now she's flying. They do say in soccer, don't let the highs get too high and the lows get too lows. And I think that's a perfect example, but it's easier said than done when you see certain players missing out on the World Cup roster. It's difficult. 
Matthews slithers to the halfway line. Well, the lows were pretty low for Chicago this year. Whether this late high, potentially to go four unbeaten with two remaining, potentially be the three points of the line with two games to go. Just how high does that high get? And considering we were obviously talking about before the game, Louisville being their bogey team, not being able to keep them out from a shutout. That type of stuff psychologically, from a club and from a player's perspective, it doesn't really play on your mind, but it does a little bit. Yeah. And you're going up against teams that you know that nine times out of ten get the beating of you. It's a difficult moment to be in. I think Chris Petroselli's managed this game really, really well. Like I said, I think they've looked organized. I don't think they've sat back. I think they've continued to push. I don't think it's been the best performance from Racing Louisville. They've taken nothing away from Chris Petroselli's side. But I think Chicago Red Stars have looked really good in certain areas. Look how organized they look. Hawking, undeterred. Schlegel offside. Three minutes and stoppage time remaining, and there's likely to be a lot with the VAR. That recent injury to Kruger should add a minute. We could easily go five, six minutes here. It's far from done and dusted for the Red Stars. Matthews. Ersig navigates and put it over the line. Corner Chicago. And with it, precious time. Something you don't usually see is Abby Ersig making a mistake, but we're, we're all human. It should be interesting to see game management here. Are they going to keep it in the, in the corner? Or are they going to put it into the box? Personally, I think they should keep it in the corner. But we'll have to wait and see. seconds and the ball went about 35 inches a throw for Chicago a hundred ticks and stoppage time separate Chicago from the biggest win of their season It's with Louisville. You know, Chris Petroselli said a lot of prognosticators midway through had written us off that come October, we'd already be plotting our off season. And to be entirely fair, I raised my hand. It did not look promising in June, but they've uncorked over the last few months, returning players back to health, getting closer to the squad they imagined. And watching young players take the next step has kept them in contention just long enough. I mean, I think that's a fair assessment. I think you can only say what you see, and I think most people would never have thought that the Chicago Red Stars would be in and around the playoffs based upon the lack of good performances this year. They're leaking goals left, right, and center. They couldn't keep a clean sheet, and the performances wasn't good enough. And credit where it's due now. No four games now. Yeah. Brilliant. Making that run, you know, they say it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And that's the reality. And it's not finished yet. This game isn't finished. And Chicago Red Stars still have a long way to go. But Chris Petra said he must be delighted. Going to the target. Driven away by Davidson, who's certainly found her stride. McCorney. Stoppage time is presented by Verizon. Eight added minutes. Time to test the medal of Chicago. Down goes Hawking, foul by Goins. 